today. It's so good to see your smiling face. I'm Mrs. Karen from the Harvard Diggins Library, and I think I see, I spy with my little eye, Abby and Nate and Luke and Rowan and Connor and Penny and Hazel and Emma, and I think I see Serenity out there. How are you guys? It's so good to see my story time regulars. I'm Mrs. Karen from the Harvard Dickens Library, and today we're going to read a fun story about crayons. Do you have any crayons at your house? I'll bet you do. I have some in my house, and I love to color with them. They're a lot of fun. This summer, when you come to the library, you're going to see a lot of crayons around the library. You'll see some crayons when you walk into the library. There will be crayons that you'll have to find in the library, and you'll see lots of crayons all over the library because our summer reading program has lots of crayons in it. So I hope you will ask your grown-ups that you live with to find more information about the summer reading program. But until then, I'm going to read you a story today about crayons. How's that? And we're going to make a fun crayon, too. Now, here is the word crayons. It starts with this letter right here. Do you know what that is? I'll bet Connor knows what it is. It's the letter C. Very good. C starts crayons, and C starts Connor's name, too. So, this is the word crayons. C-R-A-Y-O-N-S. Crayons. Now, the story we're going to read today is about a little girl. Here she is right here. And this story is called A Day with No Crayons. Now imagine if you did something to make the grown-up that you live with, your mom or your dad, grandma or grandpa, take your crayons away. That wouldn't be fun, would it? Not at all. But that's what happens in this story. So let's find out what happens when the little girl has a day with no crayons. This story is written by Elizabeth Rush. And it's illustrated, and that means illustrated means the pictures are drawn by, Chad Cameron, A Day with No Crayons. Here is our little girl, and are you ready to meet her? Let's do this. Liza loved her crayons. There she is right there, coloring lots of pictures. She treasured turquoise, adored apricot, and flipped over fuchsia. In fact, coloring made Liza feel tickle me pink. Every day, Liza filled her coloring books with aqua, aquamarine oceans, royal purple plums, and screaming green dragons. She papered the walls of her room, the hallway, and the bathroom with the bright, neat pages. Look at how many pictures she has up on the wall. She's a busy colorer, isn't she? Then one day, Liza ran out of paper. Her coloring books were all full, and there wasn't a single sheet of blank paper left. Liza paced around her room, unsure of what to do, until she discovered, right in front of her, one blank wall. Does that blank wall look like a blank piece of paper? It does. What on earth are you doing? Her mother cried. Coloring, said Liza. Coloring your walls, her mother exclaimed. Now, is it a good idea to color your walls? Probably not. You'd have to ask a grown-up for permission before you did that. Most likely they'd say no, but they might surprise you. But in this case, Liza's mom is not happy about what she did, right? Mm -mm, not at all. Liza's mom snatched up Liza's crayon bucket. No more crayons for you today. No crayons, Liza cried. A whole day with no crayons? Look at how gray she looks there. She may really look sad now, doesn't she? She has no color. Liza shuffled to the bathroom feeling blue. Midnight blue, in fact. A day with no crayons, she grumbled. She gripped the toothpaste crossly, squirting a blue-green streak across the sink. Now look at the mess I've made, she mumbled, smearing it toward the drain. Is she finding some color there? Yep, there's some color in the toothpaste. Liza, later, Liza trudged to the park and smacked her foot in a puddle. A day with no crayons is as brown as mud, she mourned, stomping around the basketball court. 
Look at what she's done with all the mud that she found. That's a pretty colorful basketball court, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Finally, Liza slumped to the ground and brushed her grass-stained knees. The green wouldn't come off. Liza leaned forward for a closer look. Hmm, she thought, that's spring green and jungle green mixed. Liza rolled over and found herself eye to eye with a lovely flower. Why, that color's not bluebell at all, she said. It's more like cornflower. Hmm, is she finding some colors in the world? She sure is. Liza yanked a nearby dandelion and crushed it in her fist. When she opened her palm, it glowed. And this isn't dandelion yellow, she laughed. It's more like laser lemon. Liza jumped up. It's even lovelier than laser lemon. Liza mashed dazzling yellow dandelions onto her cuffs. Then she squashed deep purple blackberries onto her pockets and rubbed brilliant orange tiger lilies down both legs. Now, can you see what's happening to her pants? Yes, it's got all the colors on it, doesn't it? Is she going a day without any color? No, she might not have crayons, but she's got lots of colors that she's finding all around her, right? Running through the park in her rainbow pants, Liza suddenly saw color everywhere. She dragged a muddy stick across the park stretching, sketching a chocolate brown tree trunk with long stretching branches. She pressed leaves of meadow green, sea green, and forest green in the mud and squished them onto her tree until it shimmered. She gathered flower petals and fashioned birds that flew with her across the park. As Liza left the park, she scraped an old red brick along the sidewalk, drawing a desert, some camels, then a whole caravan. Look at the camels that she's drawn with that old red brick. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? Near her house, Liza gathered gray blue pebbles and laid them side by side until an ocean swelled. Up from the, up the front porch, Liza scattered dandelions and rhododendron pet petals until a sunset glowed. Look at how she's making the world so colorful. That night, Liza crawled in bed, arranging her pillows around her. Outrageous orchid, she thought. Magic maze. Wonder melon. Her mother walked into the room, holding Liza's crayons. You could have your crayons back, her mother said, kissing her on the head, if you promise not to color on the walls. Liza eyed the crayons her mother held out to her. She smoothed the blankets on her bed and considered the coloring books spread out on the floor around her. Hmm, she said, I think I can go one more day with no crayons. And look at the awesome picture of herself that she made using all the colors of her clothes. I think she's got some shirts and pants and some socks, she's got her skis, she's got her teddy bear, uh, she's got her puppy dog, some other things that she used, all the colors that she was able to find all around her to make a colorful picture of herself. Isn't that clever? Liza is one very smart little girl who took a bad situation, not having any crayons, and made it something good because she opened her eyes and found lots of colors. Now, remember I told you that this year, this summer, we're going to have lots of crayons all over the library when you come and visit. Today, to help you remember that, I am going to show you what we're gonna make. We are gonna make our own little, ta-da! Hi, everybody, how are you? Thanks for coming to story time today. We're gonna make our own little crayon person. Isn't it cute? Now, I'm gonna give you a supply list and you, and you can get your, your supplies together. And then I'll show you how to make a crayon just like this, any color you'd like. I'll see you in a minute. Are you ready to make a crayon? A cute crayon just like this? Let's go ahead and get started, shall we? The first thing you're going to need is your crayon body parts 
all traced out on a piece of paper. If you have a craft kit from the library, then you'll have all the supplies that you need. But if you don't have a craft kit from the library, then you can use some paper or construction paper, or I'm using some heavy cardstock, and you can trace out the shape of a crayon, any size that you would like. I added a little border here at the top and at the bottom to make the black that a crayon, the black banding that a crayon usually has. Then you can draw some arms, make them long and wiggly if you'd like, and a couple of legs. Once you have your shapes all drawn out on your piece of paper, then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to color each piece. Now, the sample that I showed you was all red, but the one I'm going to make now to show you how to put the crayon together has lots of colors. I went ahead and colored and cut out the pieces that I need for my crayon person. So I colored and cut out the arms, I colored and cut out the legs, and then I did the same thing for the crayon body. Now, the next thing you're going to do, I didn't cut this one out, but once you have your coloring all done, you'll follow the black line for both the arms, the legs, and the crayon, and just color the outside, or cut along the outside of the crayon and the body parts, the arms and the legs. Just follow the black line and cut along very carefully. It's something that you can do and it's good practice to get used to using a scissors. And there we go. Now my crayon body is ready to go. I'll throw the scraps in my recycling bin. Now it's time to put our crayon person together. So grab the arms and grab the legs and let's put the crayon person together. The first thing you're going to do is put a little bit of glue at the bottom of each of the arms. So take your glue stick, take the cap off, crank it up, put a little bit of glue on the bottom of the arm and then glue it to the back of the crayon. Do the same thing with the other arm Put a little bit of glue on the bottom of the arm and then put it underneath the crayon. There we go. Now the crayon looks like it's getting ready to wave its hands to say, yay, I'm happy. We'll do the same thing for the legs. So take one leg, put a little bit of glue at the top of the leg and put it behind the crayon. And then let's do the same thing for the other leg. A little bit of glue at the top of the leg and then put it right behind the body of the crayon. And there is your crayon person all set. But it needs a face. So we love using wiggly eyes, don't we? So grab two wiggly eyes and put a little bit of glue at the top of the crayon, right where you'd like the wiggly eyes to be. So let's put one wiggly eye right here and another wiggly eye right here. And there we go. Now our crayon has some eyes, but I think it needs a mouth, don't you? So let's take a marker and let's draw a happy, happy smile for our crayon. Look at that. Now he looks like he's happy as can be just like a crayon should be, right? Especially when they're having fun coloring with you. And there is your crayon person ready to hang someplace special. Here are the crayon people. Hello everybody, hi Storytime friends. I can't wait to see you at the library. Now this crayon is what color? Red, very good. And this one is a rainbow color. I wish I could find a crayon that looked just like this, don't you? I hope you had fun making your crayon person, and I hope that you will come and visit the library soon. But I'm glad that you came to Storytime today to share our story, A Day With No Crayons, and I hope you will come to the library, participate in the summer reading program this summer, and look for some crayons when you visit the library. Thanks for joining me today. I look forward to seeing your smiling face at the library. Until then, keep reading lots of good books. I'll see you soon. Bye.